So I kind of kind of filled them in for you guys. So please, everybody take a look at question number two. All right, question number two, I'm going to rewrite just to make sure we're all clear. C to the fifth times C squared times C squared. Now this is kind of a review. So again, that would just be C to the what? Good job. C to the ninth. All right. Because when you're multiplying, you're adding the exponents. All right. Now, for number four, we're going to rewrite that as x to the fifth times x to the negative four times x. All right. Which would be x to the what? x to the second. Thank you very much. All right. Number six. Here we go. Negative 2GH times G cubed H cubed. Is that a cube or a five? Just, it doesn't matter what it is, guys. I'm changing it. All right, I'm changing it. All right, because I couldn't tell exactly. For whatever reason, I don't know why. So now, when I multiply, this becomes what? G to the fourth, H to the sixth. So the fourth. Very good. Now, for question number eight, here we go. We're going to go 24WZ squared over 3W cubed Z to the fifth. Reviewing that information, that would give me what? Eight. Eight. Now, if for whatever reason you're unsure about that, let me know. Is everybody okay with that? Um, I have kind of a um, What? Wouldn't you move No. If you can, maybe. <laughs> 24 divided by 3 is 8. One W on top. Three W's on the bottom leaves you two W's on the bottom. Two Z's on top, five on the bottom leaves me three on the bottom. Anybody have any questions? Any more questions? Zoe? No. All right. Um, I have no idea what number 10 is, so let's just cross that out for now. All right. Number 12. When you're subtracting, don't forget you distribute the negative. All right. So it would be 5D plus 5 minus D minus 1. Which simplifies to what? 4D plus 4. Looking at 14, which is easier because we're just adding. So it would be 4F squared minus 6F minus 3. Everybody should be pretty good. All right. Now X squared, we're distributing. 2x cubed plus 9x squared. Beautiful. All right. Now we're multiplying. 2x times 3x is? 6x squared. Now your smiley turn or smiley face. Oh, yeah. Negative 9x and negative 10x makes? And then plus 15. Am I good? Oh, yeah. I haven't done that one in a while. All right. And then here we have? 6y squared. And then we'd have 8y. Negative 1y. Oh, negative y. Minus 6y. Yeah. Everybody happy? Yeah. All right. And now 3w plus 1 squared. Remember, 3w plus 1 times 3w plus 1. 9w squared. 3w and 3w makes? 6w plus 1. All right, everybody happy with that? Yeah. All right, good little quick little review. All right, now we're getting into the factoring completely, which I already said just basically means you're going to factor what? Twice. You're going to factor twice. All right. So here we go. Now, the first thing I do is I try to teach kids. This is kind of like the way I would describe it. These are individual buckets. All right. And so what you're doing is you're pulling out what is common first. That's why on Friday I had problems crossed out. 
because you had to factor out a common factor first. You want to factor out the greatest common factor. Can anybody tell me what the greatest common factor is? Okay, what is it? Nine. Nine. Anybody else? Forty-five. Forty-five. Five. Five what? Five x. Five x. Now, what I mean by that is this. Look up here, guys. This means five times x times x. This means nine times five times x. Is everybody with me? And what is common? Five. And a. X. Everybody with me? So we put down 5x. All right? Now, if I remove, watch. This is kind of why I like notability. If I remove the 5x, what's left in the bucket? Minus. X minus 9. Right? I, I probably should have done this, though. I probably just should have said in this bucket right here is that. So that's why it's 5x times x minus 9. Come in with me on that. What? Um, so did you not understand where I pulled this out here? Exactly. I remove it. And what's left behind? x minus 9. You, there's three people... Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. 100%. That should be x squared. Thank you, guys. Because over here, it should have been x times x times x. All right. Sorry. Did everybody see that now? Let me go back just to make sure. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm reviewing it right now. So my mistake was that should have been times x. Oh, yeah. That's why I was like, two. Right. So then when you pull an x out, there's x squared left. Everybody happy with that? <coughs> All right. Now, factoring completely means this right here now. The x squared minus 9 will now be able to factor. What does x squared minus 9 factor to? Very good. x plus 3 and x minus 3. All right. That's what we learned on Friday. All right, it was the difference of squares, the difference of squares. Anybody have any questions or concerns with that? Anybody have any questions or concerns? All right, <clears throat> so now I'm on question number four. I'm on question number four. What is common with 5, 35, and 60? Five. Is there a common x? No. No, because there's no x in the third bucket. Yeah. All right, so now open parentheses. x squared minus 7x plus 12. Any issues with that? Now, all you're doing is you're looking at this parentheses right here, and you're factoring that parentheses. So now 5 open parentheses, x and x, factors of 12 that make 7. Very good. So the solution now is 5 times the quantity x minus 4 times the quantity x minus 3. Anybody have any issues with that? Anybody feeling good about that? Again, all we're doing is factoring out the GCF, and then we're factoring, all right, a second time. All right, so everybody take a look at question number six. What can I factor out there? A what? Y squared. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going <clears> to <throat> pull out the Y squared, and I end up with X squared minus 10X plus 25, and then that factors, very good, now those of you guys who are brilliant, you're just going to write, x minus 5 squared, x squared times x, Taking out the y squared. See how it's x squared? You split it up two x's. I don't know what's on the side, like the corner parentheses. It's a y squared. It's a y. Like I 
thought you were thinking alpha y squared. Yeah, that's why you put it on the Stop top. talking now. This y squared, this y squared, and this y squared was pulled out. Do you agree? Yes. That's why there's a y squared here. Right or not? Um, yeah. You act like you're not sure. Okay. Now put a star on number eight. All right. This one is called factoring by grouping. Oh, no. Factoring by grouping. And somebody could say, well, how am I supposed to remember all that? Well, whenever there are four terms, all right, factoring by grouping is going to be involved. All right. Now, what I want you to remember is factoring by grouping requires you to group them like this. Okay, so again, I know to do it this method because there are four terms. All right, so you're looking at these two terms right here and saying what's common? The X. The X. So I have X, open parentheses, X minus 3. Is everybody happy with that so far? Now, I'm looking here. Y. And there is a common what? Y. There's a common Y. All right? Now, whatever this sign is, pay attention. That's what you're factoring out. So I'm factoring out a positive Y. And what's left behind? X minus, three. X minus 3. Now, if you have done it correctly, this parentheses will always be the same. Oh. All right? That's an easy way to tell. Now, what I'm going to tell you is this. Now you're treating this like a, oh, like a bucket. two buckets. Um, What's common in each bucket? The x minus 3. The x minus 3. And what was left in the buckets? X and y. X. Y. And, and y. X plus y. Is everybody okay with that? All right, we'll definitely practice that. All right, any, any questions? Is that it? <clears throat> That's it. That's how simple. It's really not that hard. Wait, what were we factoring out in the plus? What were we factoring out in that one? In the like x minus. What three. step are you on? The top yes. right here? No, the second step. There's a common x minus three. So I pulled out the x minus three. And the x plus y was left in the bucket. I pulled out I pulled out the x minus 3. I'm coming, I'm showing you. I'm coming. I'm pulling that out. And what's left? That's what we just said. You What's the matter? <laughs> I can't that like that. Oh, so it's x minus three, and then you're multiplying that by the x plus y. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> now something important here. Listen carefully. When the leading coefficient is negative, you factor out a negative. When the leading coefficient is negative, you factor out a negative. So here, I'm going to factor out, or what is common here? Negative 2x. Negative 2. And now, how many x's can we pull out? 4. 1. So you're factoring out a negative 2x. Now, generally what happens is, when you get to this far, I say, you're really dividing numbers and subtracting exponents. You're dividing numbers and subtracting exponents. What does that mean? This negative 10 divided by negative 2 is what? Positive 5. You pulled out 1x, which leaves what? 
2x's. x squared. Positive 4 divided by negative 2 is what? Negative 2. Negative 2. You pulled out the x, and there was a what left behind? Y a y squared. What's the matter? Oh, where did Don't you be get, sorry. Where did you get negative 2? Well, if I ask you what's common with 10 and 4, what would you say? Oh. 2, right? But you have to put it in the negative. But right? the leading coefficient is negative, so we pull out a negative. Oh, that makes sense. Now listen. Factoring completely means you might be able to factor what? Twice. All right? But generally on the test, people just say factor. So they don't tell you that. So I did right off the bat, and then I threw some problems in that don't need to be factored completely. Like this only has a greatest common factor because I can't or you don't know how to factor 5x squared minus 2y squared yet. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. All right, that'll be an Algebra 2 topic for you. You can factor that, but right now we don't know how. So that is the answer. Is everybody hearing me? Yes. yes. All right, so factoring completely, you can factor what? Once or twice. Or twice. All right, you can factor once or twice. All right, so let's talk about 12. What's common? X. Oh, Are we on 12? C's. There's a common C. So C, what's left behind? Uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. All right, now we're going to factor. What times what is 2x squared? 1, 1, and 2. Very good. 2x and x? Yep. The only factors of 3. And I'm trying to make 7, so where should the 3 go? On the right. On the right. So you put 3 here and 1 here just to check. There's 1 and 6, and they're both negative. Very good. All right, you guys, it's not that bad. Yeah. Yes. I have a question above. So why can I factor it to? What are you going to factor it to? Go ahead, tell me. Well, because you don't know anything about square roots yet. Right? Eventually, you'll know it's the square root of 5 times x minus the square root of 2 times y, and then square root of 5 times x plus the square root of 2 times y. But right now, we don't know square roots, so we can't do it. Some people do. Yep, exactly right. I'm telling you guys, it, you see this all the way up through calculus. Right? They're always asking about factoring. Always. All right, so here we go. What's common with 14? 5y. Does everybody agree 5y? Yes. <clears throat> All right, so let's write down 5y, which leaves me with? 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Wait, no, no, just 2. No. All right. And now we're looking to factor again. Yes. So 5y. Do we have any objections to that? I'm going to figure it out. Everybody happy? Yeah. <coughs> That's not bad. Now, everybody, look at 16, please. What's the matter? No, um, I just didn't know whether to have another 7x. The 7x, you make the 7x. Oh, my gosh. It's okay. Oh it's okay. All right, 16. Here we go. Is there anything common here? No. No, so it's just like last week. All right, that's what I'm Last saying. You've got you to gotta look and visualize things. All right? So two sets of parentheses. At this step of the uh, stage of the game, you should be able to say, well, I know the 5 is going to be to the right because I'm trying to make 11. You should be getting pretty quick like that. You should start to be able to see the multiplication and the addition so you know where to put the numbers. All right? Anybody have any questions with that? All right, now we have what? Oh, we have to uh, put them in front. Factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. So again, we're going to go with here. What's common? X what? X squared. So we're going to do X squared. Open parentheses. What's left? 5X minus 3. What's common? Two. So it's going to be 
What kind of two, though? Plus two. Plus two leaves me. Okay. So now what's common in the new buckets? 5x minus 3. Oh, yeah. We're talking about. And what's left behind? X squared plus 2. X squared plus okay. 2. I like this one better. Right. Here we go. 20. Let's keep right on going. What's common? 3x. I'm left with? Now here's where people get in trouble. Then what? Very good. Why is it plus one? I don't know. Because, you because you're dividing. 3x divided by 3x is what? One. one. So if you were to distribute and that one weren't there, you wouldn't see the 3x. Does everybody understand me now? Now, does everybody see how simple this is? What am I going to do with the factors of 12? Make it what? No. Six and two. Six and two because oh, I'm trying to make what? Eight. eight. There you go. That's how I want you to think about these. So 6x minus 1 and 2x minus 1. See if you understand what I'm saying. Everybody good with that? One. Thank you. Very good. Four. All right, what's common for 22? 4x. We're going to factor out a 4x. I'm left with? 2 plus 7 plus 5. I love the unison. 5. There is one. It takes you a little bit. A little bit. All right, here we go. Now, Again, two sets of parentheses here. 2a and a. I know the 5 is going to go here and the 1 is going to go there because I want 7. Yeah. Everybody good with that? Yes. 24. Okay. Now, uh, 24. What's common? Um, 2. Negative 2. Negative 2x. Thank you. Remember what I tried to tell you? If the leading coefficient is negative, I want you to factor it out. Okay. So negative 2x leaves me 7x squared, squared plus 11. No, minus, minus 5 minus 11x minus. minus. You guys need to listen to the tape of yourselves. Okay? Yes, I'm minus. Yeah, minus 6. <laughs> you guys only make it worse. Here we go. Negative 2x. Here we go. Now, the only factors of 7 are, right, so 7x and x. Now, remember, we're trying to make 11, so where's the 3 go and where does the 2 go? The 3 goes on the left. No, yes, no. Yeah. It goes. Yeah, the 3, yeah. Again, because you're looking at it, seeing 14 and 3. So negative 2 and positive 3. So negative 2 and positive 3. So now, 26, factoring by? X. Oh, I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ruben. Oh, All right, now you got to pay attention to this one. All right, a little bit different. So I'm going to factor out an X squared. If I factor out an X squared, I get X squared, and then? No, you get X. It would be X minus Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, the next one, you're factoring out the leading coefficient, so it would be a negative 1. All right, and remember, when you factor out a negative, you change the signs. When you factor out a negative, you change the signs, so this would be x minus 4. So now your x minus 4 is common, and you're left with? X minus 4 times X squared minus 1. And now you thought you were done. Oh, However, yeah. everybody should be able to recognize the fact that X squared minus 1 can itself do what? Go into X minus good. Factor. All right. Very good. 
So that becomes x minus 4 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now please take a look at that and see if you're comfortable with that. Not really. Not really because you why don't remember you? last week's work. That's why. x squared minus 1. You should be able to tell me that factors into x plus 1, x minus 1. So this right here x squared minus 1 just factored to x plus 1, x minus 1. And I simply brought down the x minus 4. And that's done. Right now. Good call there. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now let's take a look at 28. Again, I see how many terms? Four. One, two, three, four. four. So we're doing it by grouping. What's common? Five. 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 X minus Y. And then what's common? A plus w. w. A positive plus w. w. And so from there. Very good. <coughs> Everybody okay with that? Oh, wait, never mind. I got it. Okay, now, number 30, put a little star by number 30. It's a nice little problem also. All right, when we factor that, all right, x to the fourth minus 16 factors to x squared minus 8. No, x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. So that would factor into x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 4. What do we have to do? Which one? Oh, no, no, no. The second one so that we can change the sign. Right, because listen to me, guys. X squared plus 4, pay attention, that cannot factor. The reason why that cannot factor is because the 4 here is positive. So you can't factor if it's x squared plus 4, but you can factor it if it is x squared minus 4. So this becomes x squared plus 4 times what? x squared plus 2. x plus 2 times x minus 2. x plus 2 times x minus 2. They're right pretty good with that. Yes. All right, so listen to what I, I did with my first period algebra class. We kind of stopped there because it was a short day, plus it's a lot of information. And so what I decided to do with them was I said, okay, listen, I much prefer that you go back and you look at the evens and you just kind of with your mind go through and step by step and re-look at the problems. Everybody hear me? Yes. Because we learned a lot today, actually. I don't, again, think it's that hard if you understand last week's factoring. Does everybody hear me? But again, there was a couple, hey, there were a couple extra steps involved. So I really want you to kind of concentrate tonight. For those of you guys who know, we're going to finish this worksheet, correct? So I would say to you, if you want to try the odds, that might not be a bad idea because what? Thought answers are known, all right? But honestly, I really would prefer that you say we did a lot today, and I really wish you would go back and say, do I really understand it, all right? And I would want you to check off one, three, or I mean two, four, and do the evens. Does everybody hear what I'm saying, all right? Because tomorrow when we come into class, I'm literally just going to sit here and just zip right through them. All right, I'm not going to I'm not going to take all this wasted time. All right? We're just going to work on. Them. I might even call on somebody and say, "Hey, how do you do that? How do you do that?" And we might go in some order. All right? But again, does everybody understand there are how many problems here? A lot. 62. All 62 are going to be done. Does everybody hear me? Yes, sir. The more you do tonight, what? The less. But tomorrow we have another 45 minutes that I can work with you on it. All right, but the most important thing is for you to come to class tomorrow and say, yep, I got it. I understand everything that we did yesterday. Because all we're going to do is repeat that tomorrow. All right, that's how important it is. Okay, here we go. Let's look at number two. 
what? What? You like to see? Just, just. Okay. All right. So again, get to work. So we do, yeah. so we do the rest of the oh game. Oh my goodness. You do what you heard me say. How about that? Just draw what 